All right, everybody, all you move, think, smile followers and everybody in our work-life balance, oh my, <laughs> group and everybody following us in there, it's Adam Von Enns and Elliot Fosheron coming to you live, and we've got a really killer episode for you today, guys. And, you know, what we've noticed, well, not that we've noticed, what we've personally experienced is that success, you know, climbing the ladder, whether you have a career and you're working for a company or you're building your own business. You get to this level of success, there's some money there, things are happening, you're in control, maybe you don't feel like you're in control, but some really weird things start to happen. And it usually comes at a sacrifice. You end up like sacrificing your health, that's usually the first thing that goes because you're so adamant and persistent and in a very, very, you know, a, a amendable way that, you know, it's really admirable that you're getting out there and putting everybody, you know, else first except for yourself, but your energy starts to go. And your health kind of takes an impact. And then your sanity, you know, you think, you, all right, man, I'm going to have just be cool tonight. It's going to have a great evening. You open your email. There's a bunch of people trying to cover their ass in there for this or for that or for whatever's going on. And then you've got your freedom. And it's just like, what? Another meeting? Another parent teacher conference? <laughs> What's going on here? So guys, and what this does is this kind of slowly puts you into this invisible prison. It's the big B word. It's a lot of people don't want to admit, but it, it's it's burnout. And whether or not you will willingly admit if you're looking down the barrel of burnout or not, it doesn't matter because it is an invisible prison and it slowly zaps your energy. It slowly zaps your impact and it sure as hell starts to really eat at your freedom. And if you're in that place where you're like, you know what, I'm not as energetic as I used to be. Um, I may or may not be as productive as I used to be. And I sure as heck am not enjoying life on the terms that I thought I was going to be living at. And I could really use a little bit more freedom, but you do not want to step back from your career, then you're going to love this episode, aren't they, Elia? Yes, absolutely. Because I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things we hear a lot is people feel like it's a catch-22, like they have to choose one or the other. And I, and I think you're right. You know, a lot of people feel trapped. They just feel like they can't, you know, they can't let go. And you know, again, this applies as well to people that, again, we're not saying you don't love what you do, right? Sometimes when you love what you do, it makes it even harder <laughs> to step yeah, back. Right. Or people feel, you know, when you reach a certain level of success, sometimes it's tough because you're like, I don't want to feel like I'm complaining, right? It's so, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so what ends up happening is we're talking about go-getters here, right? We're talking about full charging, get ahead, badasses. I'm going to have a big career. I'm going to do a big thing. I'm going to make my business do it. You know, we were right there and you start to feel the side effects of this. So what you do typically is you try to figure out, and it usually will start with, okay, how can I keep my energy levels high? It'll start with some coffee, you know, then it might be a Red Bull and then it might be some sugar here and there. Um, and then you get to the point where you're realizing that your health is your probably your body's a lot older than your actual physical age. And that a lot of people will go out there and like maybe there's some weight gain, 10, 20, 30, shit, 50 pounds, it doesn't matter. And then you go out or you think you just need to, to, to move more, just to exercise more, or just to get on this diet. And here's something we really want to share with you guys on a very impactful level. And it's the it's the difference between psychology versus physiology. And when you are running at a place where you're not feeling that great, and you don't have to be in the pit of despair. It could be just like, oh, my life's okay, it's just not exciting. What ends up happening is that will usually lead to a lackluster life, which will then usually lead to either some anxiety kicks in, some type of mild depression or even severe depression kicks in. And what we'll do as adults is we'll get out there and we'll do all these things to take a giant hammer and to try to pound our psychology into place. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you from personal experience, burning out for about 20 years straight, uh, it cost me a marriage, it cost me jobs, it cost me businesses, it cost me all this stuff. And during this time, it wasn't like I was giving up. I was out there with counselors and psychiatrists and psychologists. And I was just depressed and not happy and just trying to figure out how can I get my energy back? How can I feel good again? How can I do all this without like losing all this stuff that I've built and losing my lifestyle and giving up my income? And when this happened to us, we kept trying these old ways of doing things and it threw us into the ground, Ellie and I together. We lost our, 
a, a big, big, big retail business in action sports. Did a lot of work with Red Bull and stuff. We lost our manufacturing business where we had customers in 21 different countries. Uh, we lost all of that stuff. And it got so bad that our health took a serious nosedive. And watching Elia develop this severe anxiety to the point where she developed tremors, we had her in the hospital because they were testing her for neurological diseases. And there's nothing more scary than when you get to the point and you're in the waiting room and the doctor comes out and it's like, well, we've looked at MS, we've looked at Parkinson's, we've looked at Lou Gehrig's, and you're waiting for which one they found. But they come back and say, they're all coming back negative. And it's like, it just must be, just must be in her head or something like that. And I'm like... All right, dude, I'll tell you what right now, whatever she's experiencing is not in her head. Like she lost 30% of her body weight. Meanwhile, my way of coping with it, like a lot of guys do, I got a, a 12 pack and a pack of cigarettes and I'm sitting on the back porch trying to just play candy crush, just trying to numb the pain while my weight jumps up 70 pounds. And, you know, I start to have health problems, but in a very different side of things, uh, joint aches, back pain, severe weakness, uh, just chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue, tired all the time. And so what we want to share with you guys today is the exact strategy to change your psychology. And when we change, like change psychology, LA, what are we talking about? Well, we're really talking about your ability to weather the storm, right? To change your psychology is really to be able to stay in a consistent space where you feel like, you feel limitless, right? And you have energy and everything that you touch, everything that you see, you are, you see possibilities, right? You and you're good. not covered over in the overwhelm. You're not, you know, your eyes not twitching. You're not having stomach pain. You're not feeling ashamed because you're thinking, oh, I have it so good, but you know, why is this bothering me? Why do I feel empty? Why am I so sick all the time? So, you know, again, when we're talking about your, your physiology, your, your psychology, it's really that ability to stay in a powerful mental mindset. It's, it's, it's happy. Mm -hmm. Let's just boil it down. Make it simple. It's feeling good. I like my yeah. life. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Psychology. I don't know what human being on the planet does not want to get to the point of, I like my life. Um, yeah, my life might look good on paper, but do you really like your life? Are you really mm -hmm. happy? Are you really enjoying it? You know, we could talk about all those big words like joy and fulfillment and all that kind of stuff, but it really comes down to, are you having a good time or not? Yeah. And if you're not, and you're trying to, and this is one thing that really upsets me, um, I understand it and it is kind of this, but when people say, well, happiness is a choice, it's not that simple. You can't just wake up and go today, I'm going to be happy. And here is why mm -hmm. on the scale of emotions, Elia, you know, you talk about how each mo emotion has a frequency range, right? Negative emotions yeah. are low frequency, don't take a lot of energy to power. The cool emotions, the positive emotions, joy, fulfillment, happiness, bliss, whatever, contentment, um, take our higher frequency and take more energy, right? Absolutely. This is why when you're exhausted, all your insecurities come to the surface. Right. Because <laughs> you literally, your body cannot produce the energy it needs to hold a high frequency emotion. Like, yep. I feel good. Mm -hmm. yep. And so we want to share with you exactly what's going on here. And this is where people are getting it wrong all the time. You cannot out diet, out workout, out supplement a stressed out brain. And when I say stressed out brain, I don't mean like you got hit on the head or in a car accident. That's not what I'm talking about, not trauma. I'm talking about just general low grade stress, stress from work, stress from a marriage, stress from being a um, parent, a mom or a dad, stress from just trying to make it all happen. And here's how this works, guys. And I don't know if you're familiar with this, but back in 2014, the University of California in San Diego, Dr. Robert Navio came out with this thing called the cell danger response. And it was a pretty cool discovery of how our bodies work. So think about it like this. We are designed to ward off enemies, viruses, bacteria, parasites, uh, bad chemicals in the body, that kind of thing. And we know that when you get an alien invader into your system, it wants to steal your natural resources. It needs to eat. So it wants to take the energy that you're producing. Now, if you go back to middle school science class, you guys remember those things called mitochondria? Those are the little power mm -hmm. plants in each one of your cells. They produce this thing called ATP. That's as geeky as I'm going to get right there. But the bacteria and viruses want to eat ATP. So your body knows this. 
So when you actually get a foreign invader in a system that wants to steal your natural resources, well, what it does it do? It limits the natural resources by powering down your mitochondria, shutting some of them off, lowering the energy production, because that way you can starve out the aliens. If they don't have enough to eat, they're not going to be able to make it. They're going to die yeah. or they're going to move on. Um, but what's interesting is this is why you get tired when you get sick. It's not because you're literally fighting off the bacteria or fighting off the virus. I mean, that can be happening too, but it's because your body's literally powering down. Now, the amazing discovery about this was that cell danger response can also be triggered when you're in a stressful environment. So if you have a career that's demanding, requires a lot of your time, you're working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, and you don't really have a whole lot of time for yourself, then that's stress. Even if it's low grade, the brain sends messages of threat to the body, and your body is a very smart biocomputer. And if anybody told you that your body is a machine, they're very wrong. Your body is a chemical factory, and <laughs> everything you do produces a chemical. Everything you eat produces a chemical, good or bad. Uh, everything you move or lack of movement produces a chemical. Everything you think produces a chemical. So what we do as our society is we've been taught, we have always thought like, okay, well, if something's, I'm not happy, if I go and I attack the psychology, I'll be able to get better. But this is why people are in therapy for years. This is why people are on antidepressants or anti-anxiety pills for years because the body, the mind cannot hold a high frequency emotion, a positive emotion, any of that good stuff, if it doesn't have high octane fuel coming from the body. So in order to change the psychology, Elliot, what do they have to do first? You've got to change the physiology. You've got to change the physiology and you've got to get the mitochondria to literally come back online and start producing the energy that your body needs. Because when your body's running low on energy, guess what the brain does? Ellie, you're great at this. The brain has one job, right? What is that? Yeah, the brain has one job and that's to keep you alive, right? To, to keep the whole thing moving forward. And so, yeah, you're going to find that... <clears throat> When you're exhausted, when you're wearing yourself down, that you, you just don't have the resources that you normally would, right? You just don't have, you don't have the thought resources, you don't have the physical resources. And so what's so important here is to kind of take a look at how these two, you know, really play together, the physiology and the psychology. And I always say, what's so important is to understand because we are these chemical factories, why not start making the cocktails that we need to really move things forward. Right, exactly. So to put that in simple terms, right? The, the physiology, so when your brain has one job to keep you alive and it starts noticing that the body is tired and it, it, it's, a, it's a really smart organ and your body is a biocomputer, it's always eavesdropping to what you're doing, but you have control over this. This is what's kind of crazy. And this is why choosing happiness is really hard to do. Because like, I'm going to be happy, but if you don't have the energy to keep that emotion up there, there's no way in hell you're going to be happy. I mean, like you can try positive thinking. And if you're forcing positive thinking, Elia, is it positive? No. No, <laughs> no, it's not. So when you're feeling tired, your brain is looking for ways to energize the body. Because it's like, man, it knows it does not like anxiety. It knows it doesn't like depression. It knows it doesn't like anger. It doesn't like frustration. It doesn't like cynicism. It doesn't like any of those bottom of the barrel emotions, right? That a lot of people live in most of their life. And so what it does is like, I need energy now. So it looks for quick fixes. Uh, mm. Obviously coffee, caffeine, right? Stimulants, um, Adderall, sugar, sugar candy, um, um, uh, foods that turn the sugar really fast in the bloodstream, right? Things that will kind of spike you up and then drop you off the planet. And next thing you know, it's like, you feel good for a second, then you're eating more, you look down, you gotta buy bigger pants, put more holes in the belt and expand it out. Um, you're gaining weight. And it's a slow process. It's not like something happens overnight. So it's really interesting. And next thing you know, it becomes your new normal and you forget what it even feels like to really feel good and operate at high energy. And we're seeing this happen to people in their 20s and 30s, let alone their 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And guys, so the three simple steps to increase your energy, because when you increase your energy, Elia, what's our, what's our famous saying? Well, when you increase your energy, you increase your income. Right. I mean, honestly, like this is something that, you know, again, when we look at the catch 22, 
we say, you know, without stepping back. And this is where, again, a lot of people feel like they can't step back. Right. Putting your health first is like printing money. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, if, 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 you, if you're in a career and you're, even if it's a low grade burnout, and I can tell you, if you stay there for the rest of your life, is it really worth that? Is that what you really want? Or do you want to have a successful career and you want to have a kick-ass life? You want to have the energy to get out there, have impact with your business, the career that you're in, whether you're working for somebody or you've got your own business. Do you want to come home and have the energy and impact with your wife, your husband, your kids, whatever it might be going on there in your, your social status? Do you actually want to have the freedom to go do some cool things that either you used to do, maybe you used to mountain bike, but you're just not mountain biking as much as you used to, or maybe you would just like to take a trip and really actually enjoy it? Because a lot of times we'll see people take a two-week vacation and they come back and like, it didn't feel like a vacation. Like I couldn't unplug. Like I, or I was just so tired. I really couldn't get out there and do the things I want to do. So the three simple steps are, guys, you got to change your physiology and then learn how to properly change the psychology because what ends up happening is the hardest thing about change is not doing what you did yesterday. And so your brain goes through withdrawal symptoms because you literally become addicted to a certain way of life. You become addicted to emotions. And as Dr. Joe Dispenza says, every emotion you have produces a chemical. If you experience that chemical long enough, you become addicted to it. Your body looks to reaffirm it because that's the path of least resistance. So if you get out there and every day at 7.30 a.m. you get in traffic and you get mad and pissed off because of traffic, then let's say on Friday you decide to work at home, then around 7.30 or 8, your body's looking for that chemical, the anger chemical to get produced in the body. And so you'll open up your email and instead of getting your presentation done, you see 20 emails and you're like, and then you get angry. Same emotion you just had. It might be delayed by 20 minutes because you had an extra coffee at home, but the same thing happens. So what you've got to do, guys, is you've got to get in there. And a lot of people think move, think, smile. That move is all about movement and it's about exercise. That's kind of true. Um, It it is Movement is definitely a thing. We don't like the word exercise because this this means hard work and it's usually not very much fun. But move. You've got to make a bold move to identify the external things in your environment that are literally telling your body to shut down. These are the chemicals. These are the things. It usually starts with the food you're eating. This is kind of like diet, the actual stuff you're putting in your mouth. And it can also be with, you know, if you're not moving enough, or even if you're exercising, if you're not moving at the right time of day and the right way in getting the negative polarity of your cells, that's a whole different discussion there. We're we're human batteries. That's all I'm going to say. And we deplete the negative charge with our lifestyles. And if you're not recharging that negative polarity in the cells, you're going to run down on energy because you're, they just can't operate the way that they need to. So that's where you've got to start. And then once you start tackling that and you start feeling a little bit better, then the withdrawal severely changes when you get out there and try to change the psychology. And it's all about thinking differently, right, Elia? It is. And, and really, you know, again, I always love to say, You can't think greater than your emotional state. So this is so important because again, when you're really run down, when you're feeling burnt out, when it's, you know, you're juggling a successful Mm -hmm. career, you're trying to keep your relationship, you know, the sparks flying, the kids need things. And it's just like, you know, yeah, you have all these great things, but it just feels like there's so much to do so little time. And so this is why we've got to have our thinking on our side. Otherwise, it's just, it just spirals down, right? We feel out of control and we're wasting a lot of our precious time on worries or fears or frustrations that really don't need to be eating up our time. So many people go to try to tackle the think part. Mm -hmm. I want to think differently. I want to think differently. I want to feel happy. I want my marriage to be better. I want to not hate my job, even though it got me to where I was and I busted my ass up this ladder to get here, but it doesn't change. And it doesn't change because you're not giving it the high octane fuel that your brain requires to help you get to this state. This is physical science, guys. This is not voodoo, bleh, all that kind of stuff. This is real stuff. This is- well, I think the most real world example is if you go do a workout, what problems may see, have seemed you know, impassable before now seem doable. Yes. There you've shifted your physiology, which changes your psychology. So that's kind of like the most basic example of that. But I think, again, we have to go back to, like you were saying, Adam, is that 
you know, higher frequency emotions, the happiness, the joy, the feeling like, you know, what's, you know, you're on top of your world, you're in control, you have the time. And, you know, there's just not this like angst sort of eating in at, at your side, all these little things. It's really keeping yourself energized so that you can keep that thought process high. Because like I said, as soon as you get exhausted, your thinking starts to tank. And when you're thinking tanks, you are like hobbling around on one leg. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know, how buff you are. If your thinking is in the tank, you're wounded. Right. And this is because your thinking goes in a tank because it cannot, it does not have the energy it needs in order to keep you productive, to keep you mm -hmm. happy, to keep you moving forward, to keep you thinking fast. And guys, you know, the reality is your genetics load the gun here and stress pulls the trigger. So fatigue has been identified as being the root cause. When I say fatigue, and I mean, I don't mean being tired. There's a big difference between being tired and being fatigued. Like today I got up, I did a killer, killer training session, getting back into Spartan season now that COVID's starting to lift, getting out there, doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, I had a podcast interview I did today. I did a presentation. I'm doing this. I'm probably going to get on a bike ride, do 10 miles. I'm going to be tired tonight. But the difference is I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Like I just plugged myself into an ultra fast cell phone charger. I'm going to be at hundred percent and I'll be ready to go do it all over again. And if you're not able to do that, and if you're waking up, even after you sleep like seven, eight, maybe even nine hours, and you're not feeling refreshed, there's something bad going on there. And when the mitochondria start to power down because the brain is sending a threat that you're in a threatening environment, even though you're really not, there's no tiger in the woods getting ready to jump out, and eat you, right? But you have a stressful career or you have a stressful life because your career demands so much of you and you're not able to have the impact with your family. So you're stressed out there. When that happens, it tells the body that you're in a threatening environment. The body goes, oh crap, we need to power down because we don't want to lose the energy that we're producing because they think there's an invader even though there's not. When that happens, that's when your genetic gun gets triggered if you do it long enough. And this is what leads people to really serious crap, diabetes and all other autoimmune conditions like fibromyalgia, um, rheumatoid arthritis, um, IBS. Um, it, then you get the mental conditions, anxiety, uh, depression, migraine headaches. Um, yep. The cell danger response and low power mitochondria are also responsible for getting into um, things like people just wouldn't ever think about. Um, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, joint pains, back pains, uh, and the list goes on. There's been more than 100 diseases of lifestyle, including the top six killers in the United States that are linked to the mitochondria shutting down, causing people to make poor lifestyle choices. Your diet gets off, whatever. You're not exercising the way you should be. You're not recharging the human battery like you should be, whatever. It's cool. And the thing is to realize it's not your fault. This is the kind of way we've been taught in our society. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing too, is like, you know, when you're performing at a high level, right, you're, you're, you're rocking and rolling in your career. You've got a lot going on in your business. You know, there's a lot riding on your shoulders. And even though you, you're great at what you do and you're like, you know, you're, you're in it to win it, all of that pressure you put on yourself to be the best of everything, that is a form of giving your body the message that there's a threat, there's a threat mm -hmm. that you're not going to be good enough. There's a threat that this isn't going to happen, that that's mm -hmm. not going to happen. Even though in your world and anyone looking at you from the outside would be like, she has it all together, like perfect everything. Her business is thriving. You know, she, her kids are great, this, that, or the other. It's really important to kind of take a look at the pressure and the messages of threat are not necessarily always doom and gloom and negative. Sometimes right, it's yeah. just these insanely high standards we push upon ourselves. Right. And again, going back to our main point here is again, you can, you can generate this without having to step back from your career. But what most people don't understand is how to find that, that balance or integration, whatever you want to call it. It's that ability to actually have more life in the work life equation. Yes. Yes. That work life balance thing, right? Where there's that no balance for most people. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. And what's, what the interesting thing is, you know, and just one more note on the whole cell danger response and your genetic gun and all these diseases is that give your body half the chance to start producing the energy again 
And there's a very strong likelihood. Now, I can't, I'm not bold enough to say that you're going to cure any disease, but in every study we've seen and all the clients that we've worked with, those diseases have started to revert. The mm -hmm. symptoms have started to go away. Uh, we've worked with people with diabetes, with A1C scores out the roof. All of a sudden, the A1C scores drop. The person, their vision's starting to come back. It's not blurry anymore. Um, they've got their energy back. They're kicking ass. And what ends up happening is they actually, <laughs> a, a funny side effect is they end up growing their income, right? Because mm -hmm. I think one of the interesting things is, you know, we're visual, we're very visual creatures. I mean, as much as we like to be open-minded and, you know, accept anybody for who they are, when it comes down to like, excelling your career, excelling your business, getting a promotion, the way you look, and I don't mean your att attractiveness or anything like that, but I mean, just the way, do you look healthy or not? Yeah. Do your you energy. Look, it your shines. energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very important part. And, you know, we've worked with clients before who didn't have that. And all of a sudden, like, I just got a promotion or I just like tripled my income and I just doubled my sales and I just did all this stuff. And people are telling me how good I look. Mm-hmm. And you're performing well and you're feeling good and you're coming home and you've got more freedom and stuff like that. So I guess the whole moral of this, Elia, is, you know, if you guys are out there and that whole work-life thing, that there's no balance in it and you'd really like to be able to increase your energy, your impact, and your freedom. Guys, this is what we're about because I'm a firm believer in that if you're out there and you have got enough energy to get out there and serve at your highest level and make an impact on this world, whatever your career is, and you're doing your best to serve the people out there, you are allowed to enjoy life a little bit. And it can mm -hmm. happen, but you've got to change the way you're doing things. And the first step is you've got to decide, do I want to have more energy or not? Do I want more want more work-life balance or not. If you don't, cool. That's yeah. cool. But if you do, that I encourage you to come over to movethinksmile.com forward slash talk and schedule a call to talk to Ellie or I to see if we might be a good fit for your career, your work, your life, your balance to really help you get the energy back up. And guys, the stuff that we teach, the stuff that we do, the stuff that we help you with, you know, it's, it's not about dieting. It's, it's not about exercise. I mean, sure, we talk about some of that stuff too, but this is where a lot of coaches out there and a lot of people are saying, hey, I can help you do this, I can help you do this, but they're missing the vital equation. Physiology before the psychology. And you've got to attack both. So many people will just attack the psychology and it, it kind of helps, but it doesn't work for the long term. Or so many people will attack just the physiology with a fitness program, get six pack abs or lose 20 pounds in eight weeks and stuff like that. But then they don't attack the psychology. So that doesn't stick either. And if you don't have the physiology, move. And you don't have the psychology, think. Do you expect you're going to smile a lot more with your life and your career? No. No. But you can make a change right now, guys. So if this at all sounds appealing to you, come on over to movethinksmile.com forward slash talk. Let's get on the phone. You're going to chat with myself. You're going to chat with Ellie. We take this stuff very seriously and we're really insanely good at what we do. Mm -hmm. Ellie, I'm yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the biggest thing, like you said, is this is really, you know, about if you want more life in the work-life equation and, you know, a lot of our clients have reached a level of success in their life that, they realize that work or they're starting to realize, which is why they reach out to us is that work is not the only thing they want to have in their life. They want to work hard. They're driven. There is no doubt about that, but they really want to have more variety in their life. They want to be able to pursue those hobbies. They want to be able to find that balance. And now more than ever with people working remotely and kids staying home and just all of this kind of chaos going on, work-life balance has kind of been thrown into the forefront because I think for a lot of people, they might have thought, oh, working from home, that's going to make everything so easy. But then they realize that it's so easy to get distracted at home. It's so easy for the kids to interrupt. It's so easy to not be effective with your teams. And people are, you know, don't know how to use Zoom or they do or they don't or they're not, you know, they're kind of multitasking, looking at other things while they're in the meeting. So it's like breathe, pause, decide if you're ready, if you want more energy, if you want more life, then yeah, definitely. That's what we're here for. That's what it's about, guys. And this is all about, like I said, you've got to make a bold move, step number one, to identify the easy stuff. This is external to you, right? 
the stuff that's outside of you, the easy stuff that you can change. And it has to do with a lot of just like the way you're running your day. Um, some of it has to do with what we call secondary fuel. That's the stuff you put in your mouth. That's actually the food you eat. Um, and we're not talking about like gross weight watcher stuff or anything like that. And it has to do with movement, but movement in ways that you really enjoy it that are actually recharging the human battery. And when you do that, you start getting the mitochondria firing up, right? They're not going to be all the way powered. But when you do that, then it's a hell of a lot easier to get the brain to think differently. And that's where we're going to get in there. And now all of a sudden, you start feeling good. You know, you, as the big R word that is like kind of the new mainstay, it's a lot of white noise, rewire the brain mindset, right? You change that. All of a sudden, you're able to hold this unstoppable mindset. You're able to get out there and your problem-solving skills just go out the roof. And you're just like, I am on fire. What used to take you four hours, you get done in like 30 or 40 minutes. Like it's absolutely amazing what happens. And then you come home at the end of the day and you're not done yet. You're not tired. You get Mm -hmm. to go do something fun for yourself Mm -hmm. and then go attend your kid's baseball game. You know, you get to be a parent, an executive and have a life. It's unheard of, (laughs) but you can do that. Yeah. And guys, if that's what you're looking for, come on over to movethinksmile.com forward slash talk, get on our calendar. Let's look at what's causing the fatigue in your body, the external things, also the internal things, those messages of threat that the brain is sending to the body, telling the body literally to shut down, engage the cell danger response. And we'll see if we're a good fit to you know overcome those in a pretty quick time period. So you can get out there and then show you how to use that new energy to really get out there and, you know, you know, kick ass, take some names, chew some bubble gum, you know, have a good time, have more impact, have more freedom, have more energy. On that note, Ellie, any other parting shots? That's it. That's it. We'll see you next time. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you in the next episode.